and then put my professional hat on and start speaking. So I am Jessica Carr. I'm the director of the Sierra Small Business Development Center at Sierra Business Council, which is quite a mouthful. We are, Noah, you can go to the next slide, please. We are a small business development center that serves seven counties in the northeastern corner of California. If you are not joining us from one of these seven counties, have no fear, you also have a small business development center that covers your area. I'm part of a larger Northern California small business development center network. And what we do is provide no cost one-on-one -on -one business advising and training to small businesses and entrepreneurs, so startups and existing businesses. Everything that we do is free and confidential, um, and we have to keep track of our activities in a quick database. So there is a small sign up process, but it's very simple. And then you have access to any of our experts. We have uh, 17 advisors on my Sierra SBDC staff, but we do have access to other specialty advisors across Northern California. So we have people who can help you with accessing capital, starting your business, your cash flow, marketing succession planning, exiting your business, digital marketing, and more. Lots of fun stuff. So these are some links that will come at you in this slideshow afterwards, and I'll put them in the chat when I'm done talking, and that's how you can start engaging with us. If you are not part of the Sierra region, which are the seven counties listed, I will totally help you find your local SBDC center because we are a very awesome resource, and we're happy to help. Next slide, please. Um, I quickly wanted to just go over some of the Cal state of California programs that are coming out related to COVID that are for small businesses, including the California Venues Grant Program, which is ongoing or possibly just ended. I'll have to double check those dates. Um, that's similar to the SBA's Shuttered Venues Operating Grant Program, but unrelated, so you can apply for both. And then we are anticipating a California Micro Business Relief Grant coming um, where the counties are applying for that now from Cal OSBA, the Office of the Small Business Advocate. We're hoping to have those grant fundings released in February would be ideal. So stay tuned, lots more information coming about that. Next slide. These are the federal programs, which I'm sure you've all heard enough about now, but just in case, the Economic Injury Disaster Loan from the SBA, the Small Business Administration, for COVID-related economic injury is still open and available to be applied for. You can also apply for an expansion of your original loan if you have one and you want to apply for more funding. So just to be aware, that program is ongoing, still open and available, and our advisors can help walk you through that application. Next slide. That's it. This is my main office location, world headquarters in Truckee, California. Like I said, we cover seven counties. We have a couple of different satellite offices across those counties, but we have everything as well available remote. And I'm happy to help you find your local SBDC in case we don't cover you. So I'm going to hand it over now to the next presenter, who is my colleague, Katie Ford, and she works with me at Sierra Business Council on a different program called Sierra Nevada, Nevada Energy Watch. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks, Jess. Hi, everyone. I am Katie Ford. And like Jess said, I am with Sierra Business Council under a different program called Sierra Nevada Energy Watch, also known as SNU. All right, next. A quick little overview, I'll walk you through what SNU is, where we operate, the territory in which we operate, the services we provide, and a few pg e resources that I think are relevant to you guys. And then if there's time for questions, we'll do that. Um, otherwise, I'll leave my contact info at the end as well. Okay, next. So I'm Katie Ford, Climate and Energy, Energy Planning Technician with SNU and the Sierra Nevada Energy Watch, our two main areas of focus are energy efficiency, as well as promoting renewable energy use. We work with public agencies, but we also work with small and medium-sized businesses, which is why I'm here today. Next. We operate in 14 counties throughout the Sierra region. We work in Alpine, Amador, Butte, Calaveras County, 
El Dorado, Lassen, Mariposa, Nevada and Placer counties, Plumas, Sierra, Sutter, Tuolumne, and Yuba. So if you guys are operating within any of these counties and you receive a PG&E bill, that's kind of the big main focus is that you receive and pay a PG&E bill, then you are eligible for our free services. Next. And our services are outlined below. It'll be a, yeah, okay. First, we, we conduct energy auditing. So that helps us identify where in the building energy is being used the most, um, therefore identifying opportunities to save energy. We also do benchmarking. Um, kind of think of that as like a before and after snapshot. The benchmarking allows us to have a, a before um, profile on um, your energy usage. So that's really helpful once you start retrofitting and, and rolling out energy efficiency measures. We also offer project management. So on top of seeing if any energy saving projects are viable, we also help you to prioritize those projects and kind of see them for, through to fruition. Next. We also have a really great network of vetted contractors and industry professionals. So that will save you guys some time with trying to find um, those contacts on your own. Next. And quite possibly most importantly, we find funding solutions for you guys. We connect you with rebates, incentives, um, grants, and any 0% interest loans, um, if that's something you're interested in pursuing. And next. And a little bit more on the fringe, we do work with pg &E closely. They have an incredible education center. It's super robust. Um, it might not be something on your guys' radar now, but they have a ton of courses um, to utilize. I know every business faces different challenges. Um, they've got a ton of courses through their an education center, which I highly recommend. Okay, next. Um, pg &E also has a ton of rebates to, um, to sift through. We know that takes a lot of time, so we're here to help you kind of navigate that. Um, they have six different sectors in which um, they offer rebates, agriculture and food processing, food services such as restaurants, um, HVAC, lighting, refrigeration, insulation, water heating and laundry equipment. So any, anything that you guys are doing, you pretty much can find a rebate for and we're here to help you kind of walk you through that. Okay, next. And pg &E has also rolled out COVID-19 resource um, package. They offer reduced electric rates for qualifying businesses. Um, if you have any more questions on that, um, we can talk more about that, but there's kind of a a long list of qualifications I won't bore you guys with. Um, next. And they also have a great group of energy advisors. So if there's ever a time that you have questions, specific pg &E questions, they are a resource for you guys. Okay, next. Okay, sorry, that was really fast. That was, a t that was rapid fire. Um, does anybody have any questions for me? And if not, we can go to the next slide. Uh, my contact information is there, um, kford at sierrabusiness.org. And if you are within our territory and want to utilize our free services, we I can set you up with the proper, if it's not me who you work with, I can set you up with um, my colleague, whoever, or whichever colleague of mine um, works in your territory. Thanks. Awesome, thank you, Katie. Thank you for sharing that great information. Next up, we have Bianca. I don't wanna um, mispronounce your last name. Bianca Blomquist, is that correct? Uh, yeah, that's right. Okay, great. Thank you for joining us from Small Business Majority. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Um, you know, I, I, I was particularly excited about this webinar because um, we're focusing on small business owners' ability to save um, and savings programs. Um, so in light of the savings programs that we're presenting, I'm actually going to spend a little less time on the California Rebuilding Fund um, than it looks like in my presentation. But uh, I'm sure you'll get, if you're a business owner, small business owner, you'll get a copy of this presentation following the webinar. So feel free to take more time to look at it 
Um, let me just, uh, I'll just jump right into it. Uh, so my organization, uh, next slide, please. Uh, we're a 501c3, we're a nonprofit. We actually don't, um, we don't provide any lending. We don't do lending with small business owners. We don't provide the, the great technical assistance that the Sierra SBDC does. Our job is to really connect small business owners with those free and low cost resources in their local region, in their town, in their county, or in their state. Next slide, please. Um, in light of connecting small business owners with those free and low cost resources, um, we have been working on a program called the California Rebuilding Fund since essentially April of 2020, right after shelter in place. It's a brand new loan program um, like uh, was outlined in the pre a, a few slides ago. This is, uh, it's very different from a PPP. It's very different from a grant. This does need to be repaid. So this is a loan program, but the reason that I'm bringing it up uh, in this conversation is because the California Rebuilding Fund will be around long after idle, well, perhaps long after a lot of these other emergency relief grant and loan programs. So we believe that the California Rebuilding Fund um, truly is is one of those mainstay programs that small business owners will um, it hopefully may become synonymous with the SBA 7A loan program someday. Um, the California Rebuilding Fund, next uh, two slides, please, I think. Yeah. Um, so the California Rebuilding Fund was essentially built to address one of the number one issues facing small business owners before COVID-19, and that was their lack of access to capital. Um, underlying this issue of accessing capital was the fact that many of the small businesses that we advocate for, uh, folks of color, um, women business owners, immigrant business owners, frankly, don't have traditional lending relationships with traditional banks. They just don't have a, a checking account. They might not have a, a business checking account. Uh, next slide, please. So we decided to work with various community lenders in the state. And many folks are not familiar with who the community lenders in their area are. Um, the community lenders that we are working with that we've almost always worked with that many folks on this call work with and you as a small business owner should know are called community development financial institutions. And these community development financial institutions um, are a great tool for those small micro business owners who um, won't qualify for a traditional bank loan. Perhaps you need a loan for less than $100,000, definitely less than 250 if you're just starting out, but you don't have meet all of the requirements to um, satisfy you know, your typical Bank of America or Wells Fargo. So instead of going online um, and getting a merchant cash advance or you know, um, perhaps another um, loan program for which the terms might be a little bit um, opaque. Uh, perhaps there might there are a lot of fees, although it seems like a good rate. Um, community development financial institutions are certified to give low interest affordable loans to small business owners just like you. Um, so the reason I bring this up is because even if you don't um, apply for a California Rebuilding Fund loan program, I would like you to walk away understanding and knowing what a community development financial institution is, a CDFI. Um, Sierra SBDC and the folks um, on this call, every, everyone here would be able to direct you to um, a CDFI that makes loans for small businesses in your region. So um, that's the main takeaway. If you are not eligible, if you don't if you're not in a position to apply for a California Rebuilding Fund loan today, I would like you to know who your community development financial institutions are in California. Okay, next slide, please. But if you are interested in a California Rebuilding Fund loan, next slide, um, uh, I'll just give you a pretty brief overview. It has an interest rate of 4.25%. Um, this is a loan available for folks who need less than $100,000 or less. So these are smaller size loans. There is a 36 or 60 month loan term associated with California Rebuilding Fund. Um, and a lot of other great um, uh, features of the Rebuilding Fund that um, are also featured by other loan product products that CDFIs offer, uh, offer in your area. But what makes California Rebuilding Fund unique, besides the fact that it's cheaper than most other statewide loans, is that it's a standardized loan product. It's the same regardless of which community lender you uh, decide to partner with. So just know that 
um, the California Rebuilding Fund loan, uh, what you're looking at, what you see is what you get. Uh, next slide, please. Actually, you can skip forward about, or no, keep it here for a moment. Um, go back, would you mind? Thank you. Yeah, this is really helpful because these are the community development financial institutions in the state of California that are currently participating in the Rebuilding Fund. Um, the three, or excuse me, the four, the three, yeah, the three on the right are statewide lenders. Obviously, no matter where you are in the state, um, those lenders will serve you. Um, but we do have a number of lenders that operate in um, in this region, um, in addition to the statewide lenders. So I just wanted to pause and, and and demonstrate exactly which organizations are participating in a rebuilding fund loan. If you're interested in applying for the rebuilding fund, it's caloanfund.org. I'm going to go ahead and put that in the chat, caloanfund.org. If you're not sure, I would encourage you to fill out a pre-application um, and find out uh, what that looks like. Uh, no real um, pulls on your credit are made until um, the next step. So if this is something that you're interested in, uh, that's great. Go to caloanfund.org. Uh, you can skip probably three slides, I think, Noah. There are a number of borrower eligibilities. Essentially, you have to be a very small business, so less than 50 uh, full-time employees. I think that's most of the folks here. Um, these are, this is some of the documentation that you might need. Uh, pretty, pretty synonymous with other grant programs or loan, with other loan programs or also grant programs that you've applied to. Schedule of ownership, tax statements, et cetera. Um, let's go forward until we get to the bookkeeping program I want to share with folks about. Perfect. Okay. Um, something I did want to flag for folks too, since we're looking at cost saving measures, might not be considered a cost saving now, but investing in a bookkeeping service that understands the needs of small business owners is crucial. I don't know how many small businesses I've talked to that have been getting advice from um, <laughs> about some of these programs from certain individuals that frankly are not, um, they're, they're not business advisors like the great folks at the SBDC. And so um, after you make an appointment with your local free business advisor at an SBDC or SCORE or Women's Business Center, I also encourage you to look into um, bookkeeping programs that might help your business as you apply to additional programs. I'm flagging the JVS bookkeeping program, although it is not free, it's $100. Um, so fairly low cost. I'm flagging it because it's a really cool model. Um, in exchange for hours, the bookkeepers that come into your business and do your books for you, in exchange for that work, will actually gain really valuable um, hours that they need to move up the accounting ladder. Um, so it's actually kind of a win-win so that the the bookkeepers gain the needed experience with a small business. They can graduate onto the next level of bookkeeping and you um, get your books done by an expert that is familiar with all the programs that we're talking about today. Uh, next slide, please. Also wanted to flag, there's, there's a grant program that is available for any small business owner whose employees have taken time off for paid family leave. It is $500 per employee up to $4,500 per business. Um, and it is open until next year. So if you have or you anticipate an employee of yours taking paid family leave in the next year or so, go to CaliforniaPaidFamilyLeaveAlliance.com. That's CaliforniaPaidFamilyLeaveAlliance.com um, to receive $500 um, to offset some of those costs of having to fill that, that vacant position for a period of time. Uh, next slide. Next slide. Folks that are eligible, great. I'm um, actually, must be located in California, okay. Um, but you also must have less than 10 employees. So these are really, really small businesses. Those micro businesses, those that might be interested in the micro business COVID-19 relief grant program might also be interested in the paid family leave small business grant. So check out CaliforniaPaidFamilyLeaveAlliance.com. I'll leave my email um, in the chat. And I think, Noah, if you uh, scroll forward a couple, that that is the, 
that's the end of my presentation. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you all for having me and, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you, Bianca. That was a lot of really amazing information. I appreciate your deep dive into the California Rebuilding Fund, especially. <clears throat> um, okay, I'm gonna move it along. Feel free to interrupt me if anyone has a question. Gabrielle Stevenson is up next from the California Capital Access Program. Hello, good afternoon. So I'm with the California Pollution Control uh, Financing Authority, and we host many, we have many financing programs inside our agency, and one of them is CalCap, the California Capital Access Program. So what that means is that we have small business financing for qualifying small businesses, and most of the businesses in the greater Sierra Nevada area would qualify. So next slide. Um, one of the things that I get asked about all the time is why a pollution control financing authority has a small business financing unit. So what the short answer is we have a bond financing program. Also, we issue tax exempt financing and we took fees from that starting in the 70s to create a program that supports small business owners. And from that in 1994, CalCap was born. So in 2011, after the Great Recession, we got some money from the U.S. Treasury, and that was the SSBCI 1.0 version, the State Small Business Credit Initiative. So what that does is support small business through a, a variety of credit enhancement programs. One of those is our California Capital Access Program. We also have a collateral support program, and the U.S. federal government so just decided to deploy another version of this SSBCI program. It hosts up to, it has eligible programs, including venture capital, um, loan participation, but once again, CalCap and our collateral support program are eligible. We are working with iBank. They are located in the Governor's Office of Business and Economic Development. They also have a small business support program. They're, they have a loan guarantee program. So we're gonna be working with them. And actually I should have updated this slide because it was just announced that Act California is probably getting closer to $1.2 billion to help small businesses throughout the state. Very exciting. We're hoping to get that money sometime in early next year. Uh, Noah, next slide, please. Okay, so what is the CalCap for small business? This is for businesses with 500 or fewer employees, and basically it's a credit enhancement program. It encourages banks and other financial institutions to make loans to small businesses that have typically had difficulty obtaining not only financing, but affordable financing. This is ideal for working capital, startup costs, and other typical credit needs, including construction or renovation of buildings. Because this is a loan loss reserve program, that means the lender could receive up to 100% coverage for the lender if there is a default. So this enables lenders to loan more money to more businesses without any major risk to their business. Next. Um, these are some of the other uses. I already mentioned a lot of the working capital and construction. We do a lot of bridge loans. We've talked to some businesses about the oil spill lately in Southern California and of course the wildfires throughout the state. So a lot of times there there will be some money coming down from responsible parties and we do some bridge financing for that. Next. Um, all of the lenders set the limits themselves. So they do all the underwriting. We just wanna make sure that it fits into the qualifications and the mandate set by US Treasury for SSBCI and for CPCFA, our group, if it is one of the other financing programs. So you would work directly with the lender and the next slide will show you what that looks like. The borrower will go directly to the lender. I'm going to put a link that shows you directly who, what lenders throughout the state and especially Northern California participate in these programs, making it easier for small businesses to accumulate working capital and other credit enhancements. Um, they go to the lender, deal with them directly. They get approved. Then we approve the loan package and everybody makes a contribution and that's how it's enrolled in the program. It's very easy. We don't work directly with small businesses. We only work with the lenders. Next. Uh, the other part of this program that I think is especially important to small businesses in this year, Nevada would be the collateral support program. So this actually helps 
cash become, you know, it helps small businesses who need that cash maybe to get over the finish line to get that loan package that they need. Um, if it's a new business with a very strong business plan, maybe somebody has a lot of years in the industry and they just have not struck out on their own. This would be an ideal program for them because it is a strong cash contribution. Next. So um, the other great thing about the collateral support program is that we have additional contributions if you're a green or manufacturing business, and we have additional contributions for any business that has been affected by COVID-19, wildfires, or other officially declared disasters. Next. And it just gives you more cash, makes it a little easier. Um, I know that you've heard a lot of information today, and I'm going to throw down two more programs very quickly because I think these are important. We work with the California Air Resources Board for our CalCap CARB program. The heavy duty vehicle air quality loan program is made to make it more affordable for small business owners and small fleet owners to upgrade to cleaner trucks. We are going to work with CARB hopefully to include medium duty vehicles in the near future for that, but for right now it's the heavy duty vehicles. We also do the warranty work and we help the owners we just want them to have more affordable financing to comply with the engine emission standards. And also it's just better for our air quality. So it's a good program. Next. And another great program that we have is helping make it more affordable for businesses to install electric vehicle charging stations. So not only do you have better affordable financing, but you also could get a rebate after 48 months, if the loan's paid off or after 48 months, whatever comes quicker. And that we run into a partnership, run with that partnership with California Energy Commission. And next. So I'm gonna put a couple things in the chat. And if you need any other you know, information, questions, please reach out to our team. We have an incredible staff. They're always here to help. And they have been working on CalCap and SSBCI for years. And even if you don't even know where to start, start with us and we'll get you to another program if it suits you better. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was a lot of really good info. I also, I have to say, I really like your logo. I think it's like really bright and happy. <laughs> um, so thank you very much. Thank and you. next next we have Tracy Hugh Kill. I hope I didn't butcher that one. Oh, that was pretty good. It's I should have practiced everybody's last name <laughs> prior to this webinar. I apologize, everybody. Um, and Tracy is joining us from the California Alternative Energy and Advanced Transportation Financing Authority, giving my acronym a run for its money. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Tracy, for coming. And we look forward to your presentation. All right. Thank you, Jess. And yeah, thanks everybody for coming and um, thanks to the team that put this all together. Um, so again, my name is Tracy Hugo. I'm a marketing analyst with the aforementioned, we'll just call it CAPFA. That's our acronym that we use. Um, and I'm gonna tell you today about two different programs that we run for businesses. One is an energy efficiency financing program called Go Green Business Energy Financing. And the other one is for California-based manufacturers, and that is our sales and use tax exclusion program. Um, next slide, please, Noah. So let's start with Go Green Business Energy Financing. Um, so what is it you may be asking? Well, we work with private uh, finance companies, mostly uh, credit unions, finance companies, and the like to facilitate um, better rates and terms on um, financing for energy efficiency projects. So businesses that want to um, use less energy, maybe reduce operating costs by uh, whittling down those energy bills. Um, you might need to replace some equipment. We will facilitate um, the better rates and terms on those uh, financing deals. So we go from 5,000 up to 5 million Terms go out to 10 years, which is kind of um, fairly unusual, I think, in these small um, business in, in loans and, and leases of this type. Uh, we have traditional loans and leases and also energy service agreements, which can be, aren't always, but can be cash flow positive from the get go. So um, that's always an interesting option. Um, and very soon we will have an on bill repayment option. So you can just pay right on your utility bill, pay back your financing agreement. 
who is it for? Well, somewhat like uh, SNU, the Energy Watch um, that Katie was presenting about earlier, we're for utility customers of um, the four big IOUs. So up here in Northern California, that's PG&E. I know that there's quite a uh, kind of a patchwork of utilities providing electric and gas service up there in the Sierra Nevadas. So for some of you, this just won't be germane, but for some of you, it will. Um, anyway, it's, it's all very complicated up there with the map lines. Um, we also serve what we call small businesses, but really they're quite generous um, definition, 100 or fewer employees, um, revenue under 15 million. Tenants and business owners are eligible and, uh, and we're open to most industries. So retail, uh, hospitality, restaurant, um, market rate, multifamily, and, uh, and also some industries that may have sort of historically had problems accessing credit like cannabis growers and operator and pro processors and uh, faith-based faith -based organizations. Um, next slide, please, Manoa. Okay, so what can you finance? All kinds of stuff, uh, lighting, refrigeration, you can get a cool roof, you can get fans, HVAC, um, pumps, um, yeah, restaurant equipment, if I didn't just mention that, all kinds of things. And very interestingly, you can also have a portion of your financing go to non-energy efficiency um, elements. So you can do remodeling or landscaping or fix the driveway or you know lots of different things like that. And you can see some examples of, uh, of early projects in our program. Next slide, please. So for Go Green Business, we have four participating finance companies. Um, they're all offering a slightly different you know product or different terms but what you're always going to find is that they will um, finance 100 percent of the pro of the project costs they're going to be offering lower interest rates and longer um, payback terms than they otherwise would if they weren't working through our program which offers a credit enhancement similar to gabrielle's programs um, and significantly, there's no lien on the property in this in, uh, with our program. So something to keep in mind. Um, next slide, please. And if you've just got to know more, I would say go to gogreenfinancing.com. That's um, our consumer facing website and it's got um, sort of entry points and lots of contacts for you. We have a contractor network. Um, so you could start by reaching out to a contractor. You could also start by reaching out to a finance company and all those um, contact information. Those, both those avenues are open to you from gogreenfinancing.com. Either one can get you started. Um, next slide, please. And that brings us to the second program I wanted to tell you all about, and that's the Sales and Use Tax Exclusion Program. This is a, a program that is designed to help uh, manufacturers purchase equipment, kind of update their facilities, um, and be spared the cost of, uh, of sales tax, right? So that can be anywhere from a, an eight to 10% savings on a given project. So, you know, if you're investing 15 million on your facility, it's like 1.27 million you don't have to spend on sales tax that starts to add up um, we have of course some quali some qualifications it's a competitive program and um, you need to be a you need to qualify as a manufacturer so i'll, I'll draw your attention over to the um, four boxes on the right because we're aiming to support clean industry and the like through this program. Um, recycling is one is one category um, of manufacturer that is definitely um, eligible. Those who are manufacturing like alternative source, alternative energy source um, goods and services. So 
solar PV, you know, dairy digesters, that sort of thing. Also advanced manufacturing. And just a point of clarification, we're, when we talk about advanced manufacturing, we're not talking about what is being manufactured, but how it's being manufactured. We're looking for um, sustainable methods, um, less waste. And then anything related to advanced transportation, like electric, electric vehicles, um, infrastructure, charging stations and the like. So those are all the kinds of things that can qualify. Um, a manufacturer can get up to $10 million in a sales tax exclusion. But this program also works for smaller um, companies too. Uh, we've done, let's see here, projects as small as 500,000 in equipment with, with a sales tax exclusion of like 25,000. So um, this is, as I mentioned before, a very popular program. If it's of interest to you, I would suggest that you visit um, the CAPA website and get on the list serve. And uh, that way you know when, um, when we start accepting applications again, the 2022 cycle applications, they go in like five months now. So get on that list and, um, and, and keep your eye open. All right, and next slide, please, Noah. That's all I have. This is my contact information. I will drop it in the chat as others have. Um, and I will try to answer your questions if you reach out to me. And if I can't, then I will find someone who can. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, Tracy. That was great info. Appreciate that. I liked your sign off line. If you can't find the information, you'll find someone who can. That's good, good motto. Um, next, we have Jonathan Herrera from Cal Savers to talk about retirement savings program. Thanks, Jonathan, take it away. Yeah, thank you so much, Jeff. Really excited for the opportunity to join you all this afternoon um, and talk about how California is working to address the retirement savings access gap that exists in the state. And yes, of course, we're going to discuss the state's new retirement mandate and so why this is an important compliance issue for some of the businesses who might be on the webinar today. Um, so, you know, briefly, CalSavings is, is the state's new retirement savings program designed for the millions of Californians who don't have a way to save for retirement at their job. Um, it was actually created by legislation that passed back in 2016 that, that actually requires California employers who do not sponsor a retirement plan, um, if they have five or more employees, um, to participate in CalSavers, which we've designed as, as an automatic enrollment, um, individual retirement account with no employer fees or fiduciary responsibility. Um, and I think that this is sort of really important conversation to be having right now for a couple of reasons. Number one is the job market, right? We're talking to employers every day who are looking to find ways to recruit and retain employees, uh, make themselves stand out among the competition out there for, for new employees. And one of the ways that, that employers can do that is with retirement benefits. Um, so CalSavers is designed to level the playing field for small businesses who maybe felt like they couldn't afford um, a retirement savings vehicle in the past. Um, and then the other thing, of course, is with, you know, there are so many people out there who are working to recover from the financial setbacks that were caused by the pandemic. Um, so now more than ever, we see how vital it is for, you know, all workers in California to have financial resiliency, both in the short and long term. And that's exactly what CalSavers was designed to do. So next slide, please. So this is all based on the premise that, you know, the research shows that the best way to get folks saving and on a path towards retirement security is through the workplace. So back in 2016, as I mentioned, the state passed a law that, you know, created the Cal Savings Program, um, but it also created a, a new mandate on California employers. And what that says, again, is that any business in the state with at least five employees, if you're not offering an employer-sponsored retirement plan, uh, you'll need to register for Cal Savings and facilitate your employees' access to the program. Uh, but what that means in real life is businesses who are already offering a qualified plan are exempt from the mandate. Businesses have the ability to go out and start a qualified retirement plan uh, before the registration deadline, and they'll be exempt from the mandate. But for everyone else, we created CalSavers as a really simple plug-and-play solution for employers to, to satisfy the, the this compliance uh, mandate. Um, but again, with, with no fees and no fiduciary responsibility for the employer. So uh, we opened the program back in July of 2019. And when we did that, it kicked off a three-year phased rollout of compliance deadlines based on the size of the business. Um, we're two-thirds of the way through that rollout already. So businesses with more than 100 employees should have registered already uh, September 30th in 2020. And businesses with more than 50 employees um, had their registration deadline passed just this year, June 30th. Um, but the next deadline, which is actually the biggest one, 90% of eligible employers fall in this next bucket, 
Uh, businesses with five or more employees will have until June 30th of 2022 to register for the program. And I know that seems like a long way away, 2022, but it's only seven months and those, those are going to be gone before we know it. So uh, businesses who are in that bucket and who are ready and able to get started early, we would love to connect and get you up and running and in compliance well before that deadline comes. Um, next slide, please. Um, let's see. In the Sierra SDDC um, network, those, those counties that you guys cover, we've identified actually more than 4,900 eligible employers, almost, almost 5,000 eligible employers in those counties um, with more than 144,000 employees. So potentially huge impact for the region um, and for you know, people's ability to save for retirement in, in, in those counties. Next slide, please. So our goal when creating the program for employers was to design something that was easy to facilitate that again had no fees for employers and doesn't require them to do a match. Um, in fact, doesn't allow for them to do a match. And of course, doesn't come with the traditional fiduciary liability that, that you know sponsoring your own retirement savings plan could come with. So um, facilitating CalSavers for your employees really is just four simple steps. You register by your state required deadline. You take a few minutes to set up your account. You're setting up a username and password. You're telling us a little bit about how you run your payroll so that we can help you get that part set up. Um, then you'll submit a roster of all of your eligible employees. That's sort of the key to the automatic enrollment feature. And then um, for those employees that decide to participate, so those that don't opt out of the program, um, employers will um, submit employee contributions for those participating employees as part of your existing payroll process. And those are really the only two ongoing responsibilities for employers. You'll maintain that roster, and then you'll continue to submit um, participating employee contributions, again, as part of your existing payroll process. And we've seen you know, all different types of payroll arrangements and, and by and large the CalSavers process fits in really seamlessly with your current payroll process. Um, next slide, please. So we need to keep it short and brief today and I know we're running a little bit behind. So I'm just gonna quickly say, you know, um, hopefully that was at least enough to spark your curiosity about the program and learn more information about it. A few easy ways on your screen for you to do that. Our website is available. We also have wonderful customer service staff available with dedicated lines for employers and savers, your employees. We also offer one-on-one -on -one support um, for employers and, and employees. Uh, we have a great gentleman named Shane Layton who, uh, whose territory actually overlaps with the Sierra SBDC area. So if you wanted to connect with someone one-on-one, -on -one, I can connect you with that gentleman. Uh, but we also do webinars multiple days per week. You go to calsavers.com slash events. Um, and we'd love to, to have you join one of those. We go deep into the, the details on how it works and have a lot of questions and answers to you. So um, please do connect with us. Um, we are looking forward to helping employers understand what their responsibilities are under this mandate, but most importantly, help them get up and running, help their employees save for their futures. So thank you very much again for letting me join you today. And Jeff, I'll hand it back to you. Thank you very much. That was a lot of great info as well. I appreciate it, Jonathan. So next we have Lori Matson from the ScholarShare 529 program. All right, thank you, Jess. Um, I am Lori Matson, as Jess said, uh, with, with ScholarShare 529. Um, we are one of the boards and, and commissions of the state treasurer, uh, Fiona Ma chairs. And um, I'm just here to present today about our program which is college savings. Um, following the presentation, I'll drop some info in the links so anyone can click on those and you know, set up a one-on-one -on -one or um, educational webinar, anything like that. Um, so one of the benefits we provide is a, uh, a free benefit for employers of any size to offer their employees. Um, and that is um, it's no cost, no reporting, no contract involved um, and that's, a free benefit for employees um, to sign up for any time during the year um, to help save for higher education costs. So reach out if you're interested in that uh, following the presentation as well. I know if you can go forward two slides. Perfect. Um, so everybody's heard in the news or one way or another the size of the current student loan debt um, in the nation. It's in the trillions. Uh, it's a huge number. Uh, the cost obviously associated with public four-year schools, private four-year schools, whether you're in-state, out-of-state, um, including living costs, um, it's a daunting number. And um, on average, taking about 18 years to pay down or pay off student loans. Um, so with that knowledge, what I'm hoping to show you today is a way that you can save uh, for higher education costs. 
um, in the most tax advantaged way. Uh, next slide, please. So this um, slide really illustrates um, what saving $100 over the time of 18 months, I'm sorry, $100 a month over 18 years uh, would look like. Now, the blue line are your contributions, and then the gold line indicates your earnings. So in that 18 year time span, um, your money is essentially doubling itself, um, having been invested in a 529 plan um, versus you know, the typical savings account. Um, I'll illustrate further how that compound interest works um, in a later slide. Um, next, please. So this slide, um, it's hugely important for people to understand all the different ways you can save for college and how that might impact financial aid down the road. Um, so from the far left, you know, we're looking at you know, of my, uh, my accounts and the weight against financial aid award when you have to fill out the FAFSA um, can be uh, up to 20%, right? Um, IRA accounts, um, you know, depending on how they're set up, um, they're really for retirement. Um, and so it's not how these accounts are set up for to help for higher education. And you can be penalized even up to 50% um, on the FAFSA for any awards um, when you're pulling money from these types of accounts. Savings accounts really, I mean, they don't even keep up with inflation and they're just counted as another um, additional income or asset. Um, Carbondale accounts, um, there's a lot of restrictions associated with these, even up to the fact where you have to utilize all of the monies by a certain um, age date. Um, however, 529 accounts, as they are designed for higher education, um, they carry the smallest percentage against financial aid award at only 5.46%. Um, that means saving in a 529 plan not only helps uh, with the costs associated of college, but allows even more financial aid to be awarded to you um, or your future student. Uh, next slide, please. So um, remember how I said that 529 accounts are the most tax advantaged way to save? This chart really illustrates um, how that works. This simple graph shows how a dollar is invested per month over 18 years. Um, so because 529 accounts grow tax deferred, uh, the interest compounds annually, unlike certain taxable investments, which you're paying for uh, those taxes year over year. So with 529s, um, when using those funds for higher education, you don't pay the taxes when using them either. You're getting the benefit of tax-free growth and tax-free withdrawals uh, when used for uh, qualified higher education expenses. Uh, next slide, please. Um, Scholarship 529 as a direct sold plan, meaning it's a state um, administered plan. Again, um, State Treasurer Fiona Ma chairs our board. Um, we have a track record over a 20 year period now um, with low fees, no sales charges, no commissions. We're not an advisor sold plan. So all of those are just removed entirely. Um, no minimum deposits, really. You can open an account for a dollar, uh, contribute um, however much you want, as often as you want. Um, Exciting news for us, we're getting really close to having reached 13 billion um, in assets. That's billion with a B. Um, and what does that say? It says a lot of California families are saving for college with our California 529 plan. Uh, next slide, please. So how can you use um, 529 monies? Uh, when using the funds to pay for college and expenses, know this, you can use the monies for any two-year, four-year international school, um, as long as they accept financial aid. So if they're on um, the government list and they accept it and they're accredited, you can use monies um, from your 529. Um, monies can be used for tuition, fees, books, room and board, Wi-Fi, software, um, even apprenticeships. So you can change your beneficiary as needed. It's always a one-to-one -one ratio, one account owner, one beneficiary, but those beneficiaries can be changed out. Um, even making yourself one, uh, if you wanted to achieve a new certificate, a new degree, um, you can even use up to $10,000 um, of 529 money uh, to pay for um, student loans. Next slide, please. Real briefly, um, we have 18 different portfolios. Our most popular one being the enrollment year. Um, it is most akin to a 401k plan target date fund. So the Beginning uh, part of your investing is going to be more aggressive. And as your beneficiary matriculates or gets closer to that date, they're going to become more and more conservative, uh, saving money um, as you get close to um, college. And next slide, please. 
Uh, what's important to know here is anyone can open an account. You don't have to be related uh, to the beneficiary. Um, as long as you're 18, you have either a social security number or ITIN. Um, we offer a you gifting platform, um, which allows anyone to access a secure link and add money to the account, even recurring contributions. So um, you don't have to bear the burden uh, entirely on yourself. Um, and in the essence of time, um, opening a tax advantaged college investment account like Scholarship um, makes it really easy uh, to ensure that that dream of attaining higher education um, becomes a reality for your student. So with that, I'll turn it back to Jess and answer any questions we have um, later. Thank you, Lori, that was great. Thank you everybody for getting so much information into such a short period of time. This was a lot to wrap all of our heads around, but it was all really valuable. All recorded, PowerPoint slides will be sent out. All of our contact information will be on there. So anything that was missed or you feel like you wanted to do a deep dive on or need more information about, we will send lots of information out after this for resources for you. So this is the Q&A portion. If anyone has questions, I'll just be quiet for one minute. It's hard for me, but I can do it. And as soon as we're done with Q&A, we will have closing remarks from the California State Treasurer herself, Fiona Ma. It's really hard for me. The silence is tough. Working from home in the silence of the Zoom is hard. So does anyone have any questions? Last call, and then I'm gonna turn it over to Fiona. Okay, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica and Sierra SBDC. Um, you all provide a valuable resource uh, for folks in the community, and you probably told them all that it is free. Mm -hmm. uh, paid for by the US SBA as well as the state. And so we really encourage folks to utilize uh, the SBCs across the state. And I wanna thank all the speakers. Um, we have got it down. We have been doing about 200 of these since the pandemic started, uh, helping small businesses post you know, pandemic, uh, uh, post uh, fire catastrophes. And we just did one this morning on the supply chain uh, backlog and what to expect. So. This is a great way for people to get free information. I also learned a couple things um, like ScholarShare. Even though I chair it, I forgot that we had 18 different options. And my brother signed up with Schwab many, many years ago, 18 years ago. And you know, had I been the treasurer, I probably would have got him to open up a California ScholarShare 529 because it is much easier and easier for parents to control uh, as well. And thank you, Bianca, for bringing up bookkeeping services. As a CPA and tax accountant, that is so, so important. Uh, once you get on the wrong side of the IRS or the CDTFA or the FTB, well, things are very, very difficult to turn around. So getting a good bookkeeper early on is very important. So thank you all for your great presentations. And thank you, Jessica, for having us here today and partnering with us on this webinar. Thank you. Thank you for your closing remarks and for joining us, making time out of your busy day. We really appreciate it. I am going to stop recording now and I'm going to stay on for just a few minutes in case anyone has questions, but we are four minutes ahead of schedule. So congratulations everyone on four more minutes back to you in your busy days. And we will talk to you all soon. Thank you.